Over here in the upper right, our champion of GSL Season 3. Audience MC. Yay. And now to the bottom left. Our blue Protoss, he was picked for the up and down matches because they thought he had a lack of skill. San and now he's here in the final four, proving it wrong. Yeah, he is. I love stories like this. It, I, yeah, it's, it's a very sad story. You know, it's, it's so cool because it's so real. And he was picked for up and down matches first. Yeah. Because the, everyone was like, well, this is a free win. And he's coming back. And to be blunt, he's kicking ass. He is Tasis, yeah. and in fact, he's the first guy in StarCraft 2 to really do this. Really, he yeah. you know show his face as a terrible player for a while, and then just pop up as someone amazing. Uh, I mean, it's happened in older games like StarCraft before, but you know, in, in a couple of years from now, when this happens again, I'm going to be like, remember San Zenith? Yeah, he was the first one to do this. Remember Mr. San Zenith, the four-time GSL champion, Professor yeah. San Zenith, yeah. <laughs> the third, no, the, the Duke first. of Zenith. <laughs> I like this story, too, because it's real. It's not like one of those Hollywood crap stories, you know, where it's like he met the girl and they got married and life was easy after that. It's like, no, mm -hmm. man, Sanz had lost. He had a hard time. Now he's back in Final Four. He might not make it to the Grand Finals. There's nothing cooler and himself. manlier than turning yourself around from not being good to being good because StarCraft is the hardest thing in the world. That's what StarCraft's really about. Yeah. Because nobody starts that good. Nobody in the world... It's actually just like, oh, he's just so good for some strange reason. Yeah. You know, everybody starts out a total scrub. That's right. And you got to sweat. Boxer was terrible when he started Tasteless. Yeah. That guy played 100 hours a week until he was the best in the world. Uh oh. Nice, nice oh. trap there by Son. MC getting a little bit greedy with that probe. Oh. Settle down, probe. Scrooge McProbe over here. Not working out. He thought he was Kratos. That's actually the guy with the mouse right now. You know what we need to get? We need to get, oh, this bro might go down too. No. We get fan art of MC as Kratos, but he's whipping mouse cords instead of fights. <laughs> oh, that would be awesome. He is uh, chrono boosting a stalker out. Yep. Yeah. Now, MC, chrono boosting the stalker, as you said, he is also still making probes, and he does have a Zell on. So he's uh, not going to do the four. So they're here. actually both doing the exact same thing. Well,. It looks like they're both gearing up for four warp gate right now, actually. But they, well, I was under the impression normally when you four warp gate, you cut probes at 19. Uh, but I oftentimes guess oftentimes you do. I but guess if you see your opponent make a probe, has, you keep they, doing it. They've actually both cut at well 20 and 21. So Sean Zenith would be slightest, ever so slightest economically. Well, one of his probes is out on the map still, whereas uh, MC lost his probe, so they both wanted to stop at 21 probes. So. uh... It looks like we're doing identical builds here. Both players are, in fact, going for four warp gate. Son with that extra probe out on the map, though, he can definitely gain an advantage from that. And Son right now, he is going for that stalker. Nice oh. micro, and MC, he's losing a little bit of ground, but, oh, does take it out, and MC wins that battle, and that is gonna make a huge difference, Tasteless. Down Both one their warp gate upgrades are done. I don't know if he should be going up the ramp right now. MC getting ahead of himself. Yeah. Realizing, oh, that's four warp gates. I got to get out of here. I think MC might have botched the rush. Well, it's six stalker versus six stalker, and MC taking a little bit of extra damage. You can't be doing that. But he is targeting down the hurt stalkers. Oh. Beautiful, Beautiful micro by Sun Zenith. Sun Zenith takes down the extra pylon, takes down the extra stalkers, and suddenly finds himself in the lead. You know what I loved about that? He got the pylon down so low, then reverted back to attacking because, hey, if ice units warping in, I'm going to shoot the pylon, then cancel them out and warp in my own. Mm -hmm. Nice little series of... This is actually... Son has just played this brilliantly. I mean, if you're on defensive warp gate against offensive warp gate, with the same build, you should be ahead. You have that ramp. And MC, he actually, I can't believe after seeing four warp gates, he's like, nah, bro, I'm still going to go for this. Like, yeah, that was a little too No, man, Son isn't a scrub anymore. He's going to have the same number of units as you. Don't walk up a little choke point into his concave. That's not how you do it, MC. And we have a Robo Bay on the way. 
Now you can go Robo Bay, or you can uh, sometimes go uh, for um, Twilight Council and get Blink. Sometimes go for Void Rage if you can predict your opponent's going Robo Bay, because if you're getting Colossuses, or if you're, a, a, excuse me, if your opponent is getting Colossuses, or Colossi if you're Artosis, then that means that you can make Void Rays, because they're going to spend all their money on Zealots and Colossus. And it's also the cool new Phoenix builds out there, of course. Yes. Those are toying around with those. Those are neat as neat can be, tasteless. Super neat. Those are neater than a neat freak's room, tasteless. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have both players going for Robo. Right now, probe-wise, Sun Zenith is up by two probes, and that actually does make quite a difference. In fact, taking out another pylon, so that's going to be two pylons, a few units, and a couple probes up. Sun Zenith has a definite lead, and little things like this turn into a big lead, but uh, it looks like ever since they're on such close tech paths, a lot of this will be decided by exactly what they choose to do here. This is going to be very decision-based. The micro is going to be taken out of it just ever so slightly. There's the robotic support bay. Theoretically, um, San should be in the lead with the Robo Bay coming up first, but he is getting an Immortal. Yeah, I don't get the Immortal, but I don't know. It well, could be good because if you're shooting at a Colossus, I would think on the architecture yeah. on this map, though, it'd be easy to avoid an Immortal, which only has a range of five. Well, here's the thing. When you actually both go one base Colossus against each other, you have no gas. It's Totally up to the gas, and uh, that means there's going to be a ton of Zealots out. Zealots obviously amazing against Immortals. Now, if you can micro your Immortal <clears throat> correctly and get some hits on on their Stalkers and or their Colossus, it becomes a hugely, hugely valuable unit. MC actually getting two Observers. Yeah, I'm a bit shocked. I never would have expected two observers from these guys. That's that is what you do when you really feel you're much better than your opponent. Yeah. You get the two observers out to make sure no shenanigans, no tomfoolery. And the takes reason, place. the reasoning why we're so surprised by those stalker goes down. Nice. The reason why we're so surprised by the two observers is that's going to be one colossus that much later. It is. It's a little bit slower for sure. We generally see mass chrono boosts. Oh, San Zenith going to go ahead and try to get an expansion up here. Now, if he holds this, well, not much MC can here's do. Here's the thing. This is a long map. So it is possible when you're going one base classes versus one base classes to get expansions up. Now, San is starting his Thermal Lance. That's something you want to do if you are going to expand. That way you can uh, you know, take advantage of high grounds, micro a little bit more against your opponent. But that's going to mean that right now he's spent 600 minerals and 200 gas that MC has not. Now, if MC hits a timing rush just right, spreads his units just right, he should be able to hit and do significant damage to San. The only difference is that's going to be here is the travel distance for the Colossus of MC. So hopefully San can get out one additional Colossus by the time MC gets down there. He is also, San is, getting Thermal Ants. I gotta say, San's uh, PvP looking very solid. It is indeed, Unbelievably but solid. the timing from MC here is going to be so ridiculously strong. Now, MC's sitting there for a moment as that Claw pops out. Literally seconds change this attack. And uh, MC's attack is going to be so good. But don't forget, San did kill a couple extra units. He does have that Immortal. And Thermalance should complete right, I think, the exact moment this army gets here. Let's see, though. Yeah, it is going to be done just in time. Okay, the armies oh. right now. Uh, MC does have a slightly bigger army with two more Stalkers and, well, three less Zealots. Actually, San should be able to hold this looking at the numbers. He does have that Thermalance. Let's see. A lot of Zealots, though. Those are going to tank so much damage. Only two Colossus for San, not making another one right now. He's going to have to make do with what he has. And those Zealots just chewing through his army. Oh, that's it. MC's got it. San overcommitting to probe slightly. Just does not have the units needed to hold this off. Damn. Wow. Now, let's go over exactly where San went wrong there, because he did have a slight lead. And I feel like, yes, he made the Nexus just slightly too quickly. But MC rolled through him like a hot knife through butter or like zealots through stalkers that aren't being micro. Or like a school bus over a bunch of kids, man. That was just unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> however you want to put it. <laughs> like a 12-pack of eggs in a garbage compactor. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was pretty brutal.
Uh, well. Here's the thing. MC kept making Zealots. San actually made some additional Stalkers in there. Now, I don't really get that. Yeah, he was playing a little bit blind because, remember, he skipped Observers. So he's like, oh, I'm scared. What if he brings Void Rays or something? Um, but if you you're, you're going to play like that, you have choosing. to choose which risks to take. You can't you can't cover all your bases. If you're going to expand and go Thermalance and Colossus, just make the Zealots. Yeah, if he makes Void Ray, you lose. But guess what? If he just makes Zealots and goes, which is more common tasteless, well, here's, then he, you win. Here's something else. I don't think you can get an Immortal and expand. Angle Colossus. He was Angle doing Thermal a lot Lance. at once, there's no doubt. And try to squeeze I, out stalk I do feel Stalkers. Like he was trying to like invest in getting close to late game for a pretty short matchup in a matchup where really it's all about the early game and how it looks and where you go from there. Mm, the these Zealots were just so crucial, so key here. Uh, there, there's not a whole lot of micro going on. You can't really kite Zealots versus Zealots. You just kind of let them run into each other. Yeah. And when you clean up all your opponent's zealots and you still have this huge line, they just walk up to the stalkers. Stalkers against zealots without like tons of micro just doesn't work out. So you want the extra zealots in there. They deal the damage quicker. They take more shots to kill. San, a little bit too greedy here, Taysa. So what will we see another 3-0 by MC? It's very possible. Guy doesn't make a many very mistakes. short break. Very, very short break. Roughly a minute. Just enough time for uh, you guys. And our players to go to the bathroom. So only number ones, no number twos. We'll be back in just a little bit with Tastes and Artosis, Tastosis. This is the GSL. See you soon.